new, 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 new. Okay. It's only one new. It's actually just a one new. We're gonna do just one new product. It's just one long new. Okay. So on on theme, what is it this week? The the theme of the week is the Python party, and we have the new Metro M4 Express. We had hundreds of people signed up to get notified. We made about a hundred of them. We put them in the store. We're gonna be making more. But the Metro M4 Express, choo choo, it's here. Get out of the way. Mm -hmm. It's a steamroller. Yeah. It's a Cortex M4, 120 megahertz processor with 512K of flash, 192K of RAM, in this nice QFN package. This is a the big sister chip, the NR51N. Um, it's got some really cool peripherals. It's got a, a parallel camera capture for a camera input, two DACs. Um, it's got analog inputs. It's got uh, lots of digital I.O., it's got lots of DMA, <laughs> it's got I2C, it's got SPI. It doesn't have I2S, which we, no, no sorry, it does. This one does. This one does have I2S. Yeah, it has I2S, and we bought the M-Clock pinout. Sorry, yeah. I forgot the other board does it. It has a MOSFET on the back. Yeah, this is our tribute board. MOSFET passed away in March. So right as I was finishing this board. So this is, uh, this is his tribute there. Okay. He's there. He lives yeah. forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this board, uh, so got I2S, it's got the I I squared C SPI, UART, circoms, but mm -hmm. the big thing about it is it's just incredibly fast and has a ton of RAM in particular. Yes, and RAM. Yeah. Boy, isn't it exciting. Uh, yeah. so on, on our, oh, you know, it's four times more. It's more, more than four times. Thirty-two. It's like at least for Circuit Python. Six it's currently four. Yeah. Oh, because you have to do the extended RAM. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. get there. Yes. Um, you know, in Arduino, we never really needed 32K of RAM. We're like, well, it's a lot. We, you know, we never used that much. But because in CircuitPython, it's interpreted, you really need that RAM because all mm -hmm. of your code and all the objects you're creating, all everything lives in RAM. So you really need it. Yes. And what's nice about the M4 is it's like you just never have to worry. Well, I've so far not had to worry about running I, out of. I'm sure 80%. people will. Well, they'll do more advanced, more advanced projects. But mm -hmm. so. Um, we're starting with the Metro M4, which is our Arduino compatible shape. We also have an Arduino core for it that works quite well. So yep. for people who are like, look, I just want a very, very fast Arduino you know, chip that can uh, decode MP3s natively. It can do, again, this uh, parallel camera capture. Mm -hmm. It's just like hecka fast, uh, tons of flash memory. Maybe you can put an RTOS on there if you want because you just got so much extra room. There's a um, floating point unit, mm -hmm. a proper DSP and floating point. So what what is what's so great about this for Circuit Python? RAM. <laughs> RAM. It's not um, a RAM. RAM. Link RAM. Floating it. hardware floating point. Hardware floating point. Yeah. yeah. So many memory issues people are running into. Like once people are making bigger projects with bigger yeah. code, and this is the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, you want long integers. We have room for long integers. Oh, because the, the the current yes. version we have only thirty bit. That's right, integers. and now we can have indefinite length integers, which is a feature of Python, and wow. we can turn that on yep. now. And then so you can turn on. There's going to be things that we turn on. Also, mm -hmm. one of the things um, I've seen a lot of people request is async I/O, mm -hmm. which is the don't use threading. You're just going to hurt yourself. <laughs> this is right. something uh, alternative async mm -hmm. I/O, which was added I think in, in three four, and that's something that we're thinking of adding. Four, yeah. Yeah, Katniss' yeah. friend Wolf is working on it. Oh, his plan is to have it done by PyCon. So Cat and mm -hmm. Wolf, that's we, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, um, yeah, we will have that, have that going. Okay, and mm -hmm. and 120 megahertz does that does it help? It's, oh yeah. yeah, it's like it feels faster. It, it's definitely snappier as well. Snappier and oh, one more thing I forgot to add. Oh, it's got built-in crypto capabilities, which we haven't mm -hmm. yet written libraries for, but we will. Like true random number generator, AES. We use that. Public. We oh, use, you do the random? Yeah, when I. Re added random. We we use that to seed import random. The random module starts with a, a truly random a true number. True randomness. That's cool. And yep. it, yeah, there's some crypto stuff. And it's got QSPI. Mm -hmm. The Q stands for quad. Yep. And it's Read not. Read those bits four times. It's not just four times faster because there's four I.O. pins. It's actually much faster because SPI, you can't clock faster than like 12 megahertz, megahertz on the 21. And on the 51, how fast did you get QSPI going? Too fast that I couldn't measure. You're, 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 you're better <laughs> scope. So about like 50 megahertz, I think, is what yeah. we got here. You can do 50 to 70 megahertz, which is which is really sweet. Maybe 60, so like half the the clock speed. Yeah. So it's very very fast. So you don't have any delay reading from flash at all. I mean, like right. it's like zippy. Very fast. And there's actually a cool thing about the M4 that we haven't done yet, which allows you to actually execute memory directly from QSPI. I'm not sure how or if we could use that in CircuitPython. In Arduino, you could you could have 
flash that's your program could be in right. the quads flash but it's, it's yeah. interesting it's interesting capability um let's answer a question from the yeah chat. what are you using for the random source the hardware to random number generator i'm not sure how it works so the, probably the random number generator inside just because this is how they often do it is they have um a back bias diode and there's there's certain kinds of noise that comes from semiconductors, which I don't remember. Like there's like Johnson noise, and there's like <laughs> white noise and pink noise, and like I don't remember all the different kinds of noise. But there's some noise that you can get that is it is uh, white. It's truly distributed randomly. So it probably just has like one of these back bias diodes, and it's it's reading the fluctuations um, of the current through that and using mm -hmm. that to create the random number. All right, do you want to show the board? There you go. I think we should. Yeah. Okay. So we've got. M4 with the lovely layout, got the kitty. Uh, we went with two hole headers for everything here. We have an SWD um, connector. If you have a J-Link, you can, uh, <laughs> it's big. <laughs> you have, if you have a J-Link, you can um, program uh, and debug this chip if you want. I mean, it's a Cortex M4. You can, there's a lot of real time operating systems that you can uh, download and probably compile mm -hmm. and get it working for this. Or you could help us on CircuitPython. Or you can do CircuitPython. This is almost the same size as the one that JP made for Maker Faire. It's yeah, true. I know. Just yeah. want to hold it. Uh, you've got all those pins. We've got tons of PWMs. Mm. Uh, got the two DACs, you know, the standard Arduino pins. It's 3.3 volt logic. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the same layout as the Metro that we've had so far. I tested space. it with all the shields that we have, and as long as you set the shield to be three volt logic, mm -hmm. uh, it works perfectly fine. All the shields uh, we got working. We found some bugs too while we were at it, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, every pin can be an interrupt. Uh, I've got, I think, seven analog pins, and we've got a couple of cool demos coming out, like with the video capture. We got oh, hooked yeah. up to like a little you know, raw video cam, like an OV70670, yep. and we have it um, capturing um, images and then displaying it on TFTs. Are the headers pre-soldered? Oh yeah, this comes fully assembled. Just like you see here. This is from the store actually. Yeah. So it, it does say beta just because I wanted to be paranoid in case we change the pin outs, but I don't think we will. I think we're pretty satisfied mm -hmm. with the pins we've got, but we didn't get every single possible peripheral out. So there's, there's trade-offs like the quadrature encoder. We did not, mm -hmm. I think there was a conflict with the QSPI. You could have one or the right. other. And I think we're like, well, you know, quadrature encoders are cool, but the QSPI is going to be used all the time. And right. you can make a quadrature encoder library that would do it with yep. timers. Yep. OK. Well, that's so that's and okay. CircuitPython is an alpha for this as well. So when you get your board, go to GitHub and or follow the Welcome to CircuitPython guide and, and update it. You'll get new, better stuff, may make it faster, may give it more RAM. So. Yeah. So keep, the, keep checking because yeah. we we're still working on it. We're yeah. working on a lot. Constantly. Every week or two, there's going to be a new sort of. You're going to see constant, especially now that we got all the beta testers are going to get it. There's going to mm -hmm. be it's going to be a Python bug party. Um, that's that's going to okay. be fun. And that's new products. Yeah, new. Ooh.